And I know, I know that because we can support each other, that this hotel will be very successful. I also know that we have to set examples. Those of us who have the means to do it, need to do it. Don't go running to the hills thinking that, you know, you're gonna hold on to what you have and that's gonna be that. Listen, this country does not allow its great cities just to go to seed. New Orleans is coming back. Detroit will come back. We will see it happen. The jobs that you're looking for will come back, but I hope that there are also jobs that you will be creating for yourself so you can have the independence and the freedom to pursue your dreams after you wake up. <laughs> I could stand and speak for hours because I, I love to share our stories. Uh, you heard the story about the theater where my mother uh, couldn't go as a little girl and eventually they put them in the nosebleed section. It's a true story. They looked down on that stage from way up high. Well, today we own that stage. And the hotel next door was a hotel. My daddy worked at the post office. They, wouldn't, they didn't want black people to deliver the mail. You had to go around the back. Well, today I own that hotel. In Jackson, Mississippi, the Walthall Hotel there was built in the uh, early 1900s in Jackson, Mississippi, the nicest hotel in Mississippi, two blocks from the governor's mansion. Walthall was a Confederate general who became a, a senator. That was, the hotel was named. <laughs> now imagine, now this brother steps into Jackson, Mississippi and writes a personal checks and buys the hotel. Now, in Jackson, Mississippi, they didn't let us do a thing. I mean, they may have lynched us in front of that hotel, if anything. I mean, I'm serious. But this is how capitalism works. And we have to stay into it. We can't run away from it. We have to make it a part of our existence. Entrepreneurship, starting anew, creating a new concept. But it doesn't necessarily mean inventing anything new. It means being what? Innovative. Did you hear the president use the word innovative? That came from our committee. You see, the 26 people that I just left are part of this National Advisory Council. We're the think tank. Uh, we're the ones that have been feeding the concept of changing small business. So by creating these ideas, these concepts, looking for how do we have, how do we create environments for access to capital? How do we begin to make changes for patents? You know, if you had a patent, it would take you some, you know what a patent is, of course. It would take you sometimes three to four years. But we said you can't do that and be globally competitive. In 10 days, the President of the United States is gonna sign a new bill that's gonna allow for a rapid patent process that will take place within three months of your first hearing and within one year you'll have your patent. That's what it takes. We have to be in the mix. We have to be a part of the decision-making process. When I talk to them about, well, what if my folks are interested in going public? Sarbanes-Oxley, and what does it cost to take a company public? You need an exit strategy. Let's say you have venture capital, you've already built your business, now you want a bigger amount, a larger uh, uh, amount of money, you wanna go public. Well, it costs too much money to go public because of the accounting requirements. So I said, we need to shrink that and we need to find a market that's gonna allow for small businesses to be able to go public without the cost. That's being implemented now. It's being reviewed by the White House. Now, I don't want to get too complicated because I'm a plain talker, so I like to break it down as plainly as I can. But I'm just letting you know that the, there are activities going on that will allow you and your businesses to succeed. But first, you have to get them started. Now, I can't sit here and tell you how to start your business. You only have that dream and that idea. But if you can imagine what it would be like if New Birth would do business with each other. Think about it. I mean, 20 to 30,000 people going to your hair care facility. <laughs> uh, you know, handling your, 
you know, whatever your business is. I don't care. I mean, I, I, whatever it is. I mean, if you're in a hotel, if you're in a car wash. What if we all went and did business with each other? We can employ each other, and others will come and do business with us too. We'll set an example. So we need to create the purple pages. And we, we need to have our own yellow pages, call them purple pages, because that's, that's what the bishop would call them. Okay? Where everybody who has a business is listed. I don't know if we have that, but the concept is that it's you know, on the internet. You, you need some sewing done, well then go to Sister Smith. <laughs> you know, what is it that we can do that can interconnect us from a business perspective? Let's plant the seed and then let's create the harvest. But we will only create the harvest if what? We plant the seed. So today, let's plant the seed of capitalism. Let's plant the seed of being no box thinkers. Let's plant the seed of eliminating the fear of failure. Let's plant the seed of being actionaires. Let's recognize that all is possible. All is possible. Let's just go after it and let's get it done. Capitalism today and capitalism tomorrow in this country is what it is. So let's start to embrace the word, embrace the concept. And I said, as I said earlier, things are changing. And as the bishop referred to it as well, change. Strange, powerful word. But, but it, change will change you unless you control it and you allow the change to be under your control. And that's what I'm trying to get us to achieve. Recognizing all the opportunities and the nuances that exist out here. 50% of the Fortune 500 companies started during a recession or a bear market. Over 50% of the companies' jobs are listed only on the internet. So if you don't have access to the internet, you also don't have access to what? A job. The internet has to be an ever-expanding business opportunity. So let's look at where we may fit in. But as I, as I pointed out at the initial point just then, and that is, half of the greatest countries in this country started in an environment just like this. Why? Because if you can get in, you will be able to enjoy the uptick as the economy changes. You don't want to wait for the uptick and then try to jump in. You know, the silver lining of some of our students and some of us losing jobs and our students not being able to find a job is we may not have a choice but to go into business for ourselves. So let's go for it. It's here. It's an opportunistic time. Be comfortable with who you are. Remember my lecture on your DNA and the origin of your DNA because it's all running within you. You see, it wasn't just your parents. Millions of people copulated to create you. That DNA runs through you. That goes all the way back to the origin. And remember that that's in you. It's in you. So when you hear the bishop talk about spirituality in you, well, I've just given you a scientific answer to where it came from and why it's there, if you believe. Now, we're going to take some questions. Uh, I believe we're going to have them written down on some cards, and then Nikki is going to uh, review the questions. So, I'm going to conclude by saying that um, Action Has No Season, the name of the book. This is a, uh, a little plug. Uh, Let's let our egos set aside as we begin to build our businesses. You know, sometimes those egos can get so strong and you can think of yourself in only certain ways that you will miss your own opportunities. Let's change that. Let's loosen up. Let's be interconnected. Let's look at who we can do business with and let's become strong capitalists and actionaires. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.